Welcome to Worship Today Online at Emmanuel United Methodist Church. My name is Ben Morris. I serve here as the pastor, and I'm so glad that you have found us for worship on this Labor Day holiday weekend. Whether Emmanuel has been your church home for a long time or you're with us for the first time, looking for a good word of hope from the God that loves you so much. We'd love to know who's with us today in worship. In the comments of our video on YouTube, there's a link to our website called a welcome card. It's just a way for folks to check in so we can be in relationship together as a church. Also in the comments of our video is another link to our website called a prayer card. If we could be in prayer for you this week, please let us know. The past few weeks, friends, we have been in the lectionary of Matthew's gospel. Jesus has been engaging in conversation with his followers, issues of his identity and what it means to follow him. Jesus had a really important conversation when we were in our worship together last week, just a few verses before our reading today in chapter 16, who do you say I am? And Peter identified him as the Messiah, the son of the living God. And now Jesus is trying to get them to go a little bit further. And what it means for these followers to come a little bit further with Jesus is for him to say to his disciples, take up your cross and follow me. I'm so glad you're with us, friends, as we listen for what those words mean for us to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Will you pray with me over our worship today? God, we're so grateful for the gift of this day, the ability to gather together. We come to hear from you, God, in the music and in the Holy Scriptures. We give you thanks for the gifts that are offered to make this time possible for our music team and our editing team. Come Holy Spirit, bless this time in the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, thank you for all of the ways you share time and talent and financial gift through the ministries of Emmanuel Church. I know that you have been praying for the people of Maui since those terrible wildfires just a few short days ago. Maybe it's been a few weeks already. The time just keeps going so fast. And I know that you are praying for those affected by the hurricanes in Florida. From time to time, we talk about the work of UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and how they are the hands and feet of Christ through the church. That is how we, friends, can be present through the United Methodist Church in these moments of disaster. I wanted to invite you to share a gift to UMCOR during this time. You can write a check to Emmanuel and write UMCOR in the memo line, and those gifts will go directly to the work of UMCOR and disaster relief in these horrible occurrences that have taken place. You can also go directly to ummission.org, UMCOR's website, and give to U.S. Disaster Relief to support their ministry. Thank you so much. 
and thank you for all that you do to support our work right here on this corner of Beeden College. Our food pantry ministry, which has been so busy, friends, we look forward to in just a few weeks on September 20th when our Wednesday night meals will return. Thank you for supporting those ministries when you're in person with us and can offer a gift on our offering plate or you're sending checks in the mail for those ministries. I use our online giving available on our website, emmanuel-umc.org, or there is an app to give directly to Emmanuel, the Vanco mobile app that you can download for a smartphone or a tablet. And in the comments of our video, there is a code that you can use on the app to look up our church and find us very easily. Thank you, friends, for supporting the ministries of the church here on this corner of Mead and College and all around the world. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful for how you have blessed us and the opportunity to return a portion of that blessing back to you through the work of your church in our community and to be the hands and feet of Christ in so many places all around the world. We continue to pray for those affected by the wildfires in Maui and our hearts are moved, God, by how we have seen such terrible devastation in Florida in the hurricanes. Thank you, God, for the generous hearts of your people here, for the gifts shared, and we ask your blessing on all of these things, of gifts of time and talent and finance, that your Son, the Christ, may be a sign among us. In his name we pray. Amen. Our reading of scripture today is from Matthew's Gospel, the 16th chapter. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 2019, I went on a mission trip to Senegal, Africa with some folks from Emmanuel Church and some other churches in our circuit. During the trip, we traveled to different churches and ministry sites around the country of Senegal. So as we traveled, some of our meals would often be on the go between stops, maybe at a restaurant or often at a church that would host us. The options for food would often include chicken that had been raised locally, or some fish that had been recently caught and prepared. Now I enjoy fish, I enjoy fresh fish, and I even enjoyed and tried some of the fish that we had on this trip. But I didn't always enjoy the presentation of the fish as it was offered. Sometimes at these restaurants or often at the churches, the head of the fish was still preserved. And as you were serving it, or maybe given an entire fish for one person, the fish would just be staring at you the entire time. This never dissuaded one member of our group, Bill, who had served as a missionary in Senegal for several years. Bill had fish everywhere we went, everywhere it was available. He knew the different types of fish that were swimming in the local waters. He knew how it would be prepared. I think he might have even known some of the family members of these poor fish. But it never stopped him 
from staring right in the eye of these fish and enjoying his lunch. But what I really appreciated about Bill was this was just one of the ways that he embraced being a part of the culture and being with the people in Senegal. He always did and still practices French every day, which is the language spoken in Senegal, one of the languages. He knew the history. He loved the fish. That's how it is, friends, if you're truly going to be part of something. You truly have to immerse yourself. There is no holding back. God has a story for us about this in our gospel from Matthew today. Our scripture today is a continuous reading from where we spent our time last week with Peter as he gave what felt like the right answer about who Jesus is, the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter and the disciples have claimed and affirmed their faith in Christ, and yet the manner and mission of Christ seems to be difficult to fathom. Jesus has laid out the path of suffering and sacrifice, a path that demands servanthood. And now Jesus is foretelling the disciples of his death and resurrection. And we hear in our scripture reading, friends, that Peter is shocked. Forbid it, Lord. Peter, who last week was applauded for his great faith, for recognizing who God in Christ is, now he wants to keep Jesus close so he doesn't have to move any further. Jesus and me instead of Jesus and we. It is in this context, friends, that Jesus says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the, their cross and follow me. Jesus was very purposeful in linking the cross to discipleship, foreshadowing how he was going to join us in death, but also reminding the disciples that in, the, in that very moment, how he had joined them in life. In bearing the cross, Jesus mixed blood with us became joined in the same suffering that we endure in this life and also in death. The Word of God, Jesus, born flesh among us, becoming despised as a Jew into the Roman Empire, was not born among the powerful, but born among the powerless, living as a Galilean in the Jerusalem establishment, a sign, friends, that God, without hesitation, was diving right in to take part of what we were doing. He came right alongside us, immersing himself into the mess of humanity, sharing food with the hungry, proclaiming good news to the poor, healing the sick, never holding back. That's what cross-carrying was and is for Jesus. And that's what he's trying to tell his followers. If we are to be followers of Jesus, we cannot become any less vulnerable with, toward, and forward others. To be unafraid to carry our cross to those places where we feel uncomfortable. We can't do it because odds are that Jesus has already been there. We are called to follow because we believe in the promise of the resurrection, because we believe that God in Christ will do yet a new thing. Cross-bearing does not mean hiding out from life's joys and blessings and responsibility, enclosing ourselves in self-righteousness and calling that self-sacrifice. It doesn't mean like Peter keeping Jesus close. I really think, friends, if we listen, for most of us, cross-bearing means serving others with compassion. Cross-bearers are God's allies setting aside our own agendas 
denying ourselves for the personal advancement in favor of our neighbor. I wonder if cross-bearing is better explained in another one of today's readings from the lectionary. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to 21, which in our in-person service today, we did a responsive reading in place of the prayer of confession. In that scripture, Paul offers a long list of virtues that characterize cross-bearing, I think in the best sense of the term. This list of things from Paul in chapter 12 of his letter to the Romans is punctuated with a list of action and attitudes that make life meaningful. Genuine love for others, tenacious good, perseverance even as we are encroached by evil, patience and suffering, blessing even those who persecute, cultivating empathy, practicing hospitality. Crossing, cross-bearing like Jesus is truly participating and embracing life, love, and goodness. Patience and suffering in all of the same ways that Jesus did. No holding back. Immersing ourselves in life and love. Like you, friends, I continue to be in prayer for those affected by the wildfires in Hawaii. Many lost everything, only having the clothes on their backs. I was reading a story this week in NPR about the present state of things, where people have been living, how they're making it day to day. We're about two, two and a half weeks now after the wildfire fire and the historic community of Lahaina and other damaged areas, most people whose homes are gone, they've found temporary housing. Nearly 2,400 people have moved into hotel rooms. Others are staying with family and friends. These are just stopgap accommodations until they figure out really what's going to happen next. Well, this story on NPR really caught my eye because I felt it was a story of cross-bearing. The stepfather of one Lahaina woman opened up his home and his property to her and to their extended family. A fluctuating group of cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, and friends, and at times the number of people being housed in this property, which includes a house, a large garage, and other buildings, at times the number of people being housed in this one home has been 87 people. Can you imagine, friends, after this disaster, hosting 87 people in your home? The story talked about people being together all the time, telling stories, playing music and singing together, breaking bread, embracing love and life. That's 87 people in your home at one time after a natural disaster. That's taking up your cross and following Jesus, embracing life, love, and goodness, no holding back. And it is participating, friends, in this way of Christ's body in the world that we find ourselves resurrected to new life. Let us pray. God, we give you great thanks for your love for us, for the example that we have in Christ Jesus the one who carried his cross on the way of death, but on that path, God, demonstrated for us that you are in this with us all the way, embracing love 
and suffering and everything that this life is about. Cross-bearing is about genuineness. Being part of all of the same things, God, that we are in this life. Empathy and goodness. Help us to hear that, God, in all of the ways we might need to follow in the footsteps of Christ all the way to the cross and to see new life beyond and through the empty tomb. In his name, we give you great thanks. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Worship Today Online at Emmanuel Church. So good to be with you. Things will really be kicking off into full gear next week, September 10th, friends, as fall resumes. Sunday School for All Ages will be at 8.45 before worship, including confirmation class. There'll be a younger group for Sunday School and adults as well. During worship, we'll have a special time called Blessing of the Backpacks. So if you are a student or teacher, or if for any capacity during your work week you carry a backpack, we invite you to bring that and have a special blessing upon the backpack and upon you as this new season of fall arrives for all of us. Hope that you can join us. As we go forth, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.